Everybody can introduce yourself. Andy. Hey, I'm Andy. How are you? My name is Sinesh Bowen with Noah Dad. Hello. Oh. Hi, Katie. I'm Katie. <laughs> hey, Jamie, how you doing? I'm great. <laughs> Well, this is actually one of the things that I'm showing people tonight is how to use Hangouts uh, because, you know, it's a, it's a great free tele uh, video presence uh, facility. Now, I don't know if anybody actually saw our, uh, or listened to our little radio show today, but what, what Andy and I were talking about was the marketing side of online marketing because, you know, the, the thing is, that's why they call it online marketing. Yeah. But most people, they'll, they'll get the online side right and they'll get the marketing side wrong, and as a result, they're gonna get very little or no conversions to, you know, to money, because the reason to have a website is to make money. So you've gotta use basic principles of um, online, or rather traditional marketing incorporated with your online marketing. So we were talking today about doing a, a, a USP, a unique sales proposition. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you go to your website, that's the thing that you need to hook the fish. Okay, so what, one of the things you can do if you want to find out more about creating a USP is you can go to the, um, the replay of, of uh, Working the Web to Win. We're going to have it up there tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and then that'll be part of our little learning module. But we can talk about that a little bit tonight because, like I said, most of the people, you, you know, you'll have a, a, a great website. It's, it's interesting. You've got videos. But how do you actually ask for the sale? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's one of the things we're going to talk about. One of the other things we're going to talk about, and this is the reason, too, that I brought everybody together here tonight, was to kind of do a, um, a review of some of the things we've been doing, kind of get some feedback from everybody to see how you feel about, uh, you know, how the assignments are progressing and how those are being handled and, and any way we can streamline the process or make it a little bit easier. I think right now it's just a matter of people getting used to new um, habits. There's a lot of people that are on LinkedIn and on Facebook and on Twitter that hardly ever feed it. Yeah. So that's, in fact, right now, since they changed the look of Facebook where it's got the timeline, you know, if you don't feed it, you get all these holes in the Swiss cheese. So you really yes. need to feed it yeah. every day. Really? Yep. Because when you feed it every day, then it's, it's complete and it's not holy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like Swiss cheese. Mm -hmm. It's more like cheddar. Mm. You know, and, and people, you know, because the way they present it now, that's, that's important because if somebody looks on there and they won't see anything because it'll drop down by the dates, you know, and all of a sudden you, you've got nothing to yeah. really read. Three months, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Now, the beauty of what we're doing, though, is we actually, because we're passing things back and forth, we make it easy because if you go down to the bottom of the post or you go down to the bottom of whatever the tweet was, whatever, you can retweet it, you can repost it, you can plus it, you can Facebook it, you can send it off to LinkedIn, and when you do that, you're done for the day. No, I didn't see a LinkedIn on there. Did I miss that? A LinkedIn on what? On the bottom of the blogger post. No, the thing is on Blogger, they don't have it there, but you can still feed the Blogger. Okay. All you have to do is go take your, you know, your little URL. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't do that. Some of them have different things. Sometimes you have certain types of uh, facilities that don't have the, the, the plus one, but most of them do. Right. You know, because today I read another article, and it's got to be Facebook putting this out, saying, you know, that, that Google Plus is a ghost town, and it's not dead, not yet. You know. Oh, I think Google Plus, uh, they're crazy to think that it's not going to Well, you know, you're comparing it to Facebook, which has been around for a number of years and has 900 million users, but, you know, Google Plus already has well over 100 million, really? and now that they've folded Google Local into it, literally anybody that has a Gmail account now has, has access to Google Plus, so that's like 400 million people. It's so, yeah, it's not as big animal. as Facebook, but look at it in, in the same time frame, mm -hmm. all right? And, to be honest with you, I'd much rather have... Google Plus happy with me than Facebook because by using Google Plus, a lot of times that puts you right on the front of Google. Hi, Carol, come on in. Nice. The party. Carol, that's, that's John Taylor, and this is Katie Akers, and this is. Hello, Katie. Yeah, you know Katie. And there's, there's Andy. Andy, nice to meet you. Andy, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Good. And that's Sanush, who's one of uh, John's minions. All right. <laughs> that's part of the process. Is he, is he doing all the. Yes, he is. We're doing good. all of it. Good. All of it. <laughs> and loving every minute, right? <laughs> He's actually getting better at it. It's just, like I said, it, it's a matter of just building the right habits. And what I was telling him was that literally, because he's had trouble with the blogging end of it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you've got all those great newsletters. Yeah. I said, just comb through those for some information. And then you just retool them a little bit and then send them to us. And we'll tweak them up for you and send them back to you. And you're good to go. Because, yeah. you know, blogs don't have to be long. No, they don't. No. <laughs> I mean, Twitter is a blog. 
Yeah, well, Twitter's a micro blog. So when you're doing blogger, you've got to present a certain amount of information. If it's if it's at least not four or five paragraphs, you're not going to get the job done. It's okay. not a tweet. It is not a tweet. You know. Uh, so you I, do need at least four to five paragraphs. Yeah, you want to present some information because the whole point with see tweet Twitter is kind of like a quick fix. It's like look at this. Mm -hmm. More more along the lines of you'll tweet your blog to yeah. get people to come over and read it. Right. But if there's there's no meat and potatoes there, if there's no content, there's no reason for them to ever come back. Right. You know, and when you're doing blogging, the, the whole there's, there's like three magic beans with blogging. Okay, number one, then this is the biggest one: solve a problem. If you'll notice, when we did the uh, the last episode, when we talked about blogging, and we gave you, we put like four or five articles. It really shows you the ABCs of how to blog. Did you pick that up? That was in the Dropbox. It's still in the Dropbox. It's still in the Dropbox. Yeah, it's still in the Dropbox. Yeah. And we put you're together. Keep it there, right? Oh yeah, that stuff stays in there. It's it bigger every time. It's actually not. No, these were these were actually documents. Okay, I saw the the doc, the word doc, or not word, but whatever. It was either a PDF or word. One of the other. Okay. Heck, I put it in. I don't know what format yeah. you used. But that's what those were all about. And what they did was they showed you all the little ins and outs of how to structure blocks. So it made it easy for you. But mm -hmm. but like I said, solve a problem. Uh, timely information. And the third one is what I call eye candy, which is either something you know that just kind of jumps out at you, something funny, make them laugh. And, and the other thing too, and this is where a lot of people really don't do this, is you can also incorporate a video into your blog. In fact, every time you get a blog from me, it doesn't have a video or two in there? Yes. I do that for a reason. All right, because what we're doing is we're cross-pollinating the system. And also we're cross-promoting uh, all of our, you know, pieces of the puzzle there. Where, you know, the, the blog mm -hmm. promotes, the video promotes the, the blog. It all goes back and forth. And so when you do that, when you cross pollinate, that makes it stronger. In fact, a lot of times that's how you get to jump onto page one of Google because they like that. The gorilla likes that. Granted, we, we can do some really cool, you know, professional videos, mm -hmm. but you don't have to just do professional videos. You can do a video blog. You can use that, you know, the little camera in your computer. You can use the camera in your cell phone just to do a little video post. You know, if you want to get uh, fancy, you can get yourself a little green screen to put behind you because most every software on the market today, even the stuff that comes built into your computer has a green screen program so you can make it look more interesting and always looking at your shelves or something. <laughs> back of the office, back of the room. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the beauty of it today. Even, even the little simple things that you've got, these little simple tools are really powerful. This actually is, is the most handy tool for blogging because even if you're not using it to shoot a video blog, when you see something you can take a picture of it, you can take a little video of yourself saying, okay, let's remember to do this or do that. The whole point is, is when you trip over the idea for the blog, you got to lock it in. And there's two ways of doing it, old style and modern. Yeah. Once you've established a habit, literally, it's very easy to, to write. And if you if you run out of material, then I just start doing a Google search. You know, I, I, I pour through the uh, news feeds all the time to find information. That's where you get most of your tweets from me every day. I guess you could also look for the trending words. <laughs> there you go. Look for trending words mm -hmm. on... Um, mm -hmm. Twitter. Thank you. <laughs> Twitter. And, and there's a lot of other sites that have trending words. I noticed even the Weather Channel has trending words. Yeah, they're all over the place now. What yeah. Is, what, 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 well, what that tells you is what, what are the hot keywords, in other words, of the things that are making the news? Oh, well, and this is today. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of times it's Like right this minute, usually so it's what is going on, what's hot right this minute. Like on Twitter, they'll have um, the trend, um, what's being talked about right now. That's another reason that if you're doing an event that you can use hashtags and um, you want to use, give them key phrases to use at an event if you're doing a speaking engagement or something like that so that you can, if you have enough people there and giving them reasons to keep uh, stating those certain phrases mm -hmm. onto Twitter, then um, you can become a trending word. But you can also tie into the trends, and then you know what a hashtag is? Well, I've seen them. Yeah, the pound sign and a, and a couple of words strung together, and, and what that is is that, that again, that, that will direct people to your, your tweet. That's the way to broadcast beyond your own little limited circle of influence. And particularly if it's a trending mm -hmm. keyword, then yeah, you can research those. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's all online. And like the hashtags, if you're at a particular event, you want to see what everybody's saying at that event, and you also, also mm -hmm. coach those people at that event to use hashtag you know, BYN networking, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you can have everybody going out there and looking for what's being talked about with them, BYN networking right. that day.
we could look for the trending yep. words in order to decide, give us inspiration for writing our Absolutely. blogs. Absolutely. Absolutely. The point is, is that literally there, there are things happening around you all the time. You're, you're tripping over ideas for blogs, but if you just fail to record them. What we were talking today on the show about the first thing you have you want to do if you really want to succeed online, and it's the same thing with any business proposition, you have to identify and quantify your, your key targets. In other words, who are your ideal clients? And then once you figure out who your ideal clients are, then you have to create a lure, which is the USP, you know, the offer that will make them want to cross over and either buy or in the case of social networking, at least friend you, connect with you. Consume. Consume, right. That's the point. Andy is a brick and mortar traditional marketing maven. I mean, that's what sure. he does. He used to have a company called Revolutionary Marketing. And the reason I brought him into our company is I realized that, you know, without the marketing, the online doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm trying to put everybody in the bus that we need to make sure that ultimately you guys succeed. And my job first is to get you to the point where the Google Gorilla likes you and starts to place you all over Google mm -hmm. on the keywords that you want. But the problem is, is once I get you there, if you don't know what Andy has to offer, which is how to so make money an offer they can't refuse kind of thing, then what's going to happen is you, you're going to have bragging rights, but you're not going to be able to convert you know, clicks to cash. Ultimately, the online marketing, you still have to have basic marketing principles. Mm -hmm. All right, And the reason we're talking about the unique uh, selling proposition, or to put it simpler, an offer, the offer has to be strong. The offer has to be something, like, almost an irresistible lure. It doesn't always have to be monetary. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, sometimes it could even be something where, you know, you, you can do ebooks. They're very popular. The trick is what you want to do is it's called a sticking inspector. So when somebody comes into your website, you don't want them doing this. No. And that's what happens to most people's websites, mostly because of the way they're organized. It's like flypaper, you know. If you only got a piece that's, you know, this big, how much you're going to cover. You know, if you got something like that, you can catch a lot more flies. So actually having an offer on the page and sometimes a little form for them to fill out ain't a bad idea. We use it very successfully ourselves. But mm -hmm. the first thing you have to do before you can do that is you have to identify who are, you know, who's my perfect client or clients and what is it that I could offer them other than giving away my service that would make them either buy or at least sign up. But the point is is that having some, some reason for them to want to order something, register for something, doesn't have to be something that you're actually selling them. It can be a, an intangible, something that doesn't cost you anything. But what that does is now it starts to build up a database that you can mine. That's the key right there. Yeah. yeah your list Forming your own audience to sell to. And, and what you're doing with the, the videos and the blogs and the tweets and the Facebook posts is you're teaching them how to buy from you. And, and the reason that when you do it on social networking, you're not hitting them right between the eyes. It's not a used car sale. But what you're doing is you're proving to them that you're an authority. So you're, you're getting the respect, you're proving your credibility, and then you're ruling them a little closer to the boat. Next week, one of the things we'll talk about when Hector gets back is link building. And I don't want to wait for him because he's got some strong opinions on that, so I didn't want to handle that on my own because that's another important part of the SEO process. Google likes links. So yeah. we're going to talk about strategic links, we're going to talk about unilateral links, we're going to talk about yeah, back right. links. You're going to hear things, we'll start teaching you things, and you'll talk to some experts, some experts, like we had one at our boot camp, you know, oh, I, I thought that backlinks were not good. It's like, well, no, they are good. You know, you just don't have just backlinks, you need a mix. Every kind of link is good if you do it in the right proportion. But you're going to get somebody, we're going to tell you something, and they go, well, that's absolutely crazy, because, you know, I heard that, or I read that, it's, you know. Sure. That's that's that, on the that's internet common. And read all kinds of stuff. Can't exactly, you? and even on the internet, even some of the experts they contradict each other all the time. So ultimately, we just have to decide what's the thing that works best. And and the bottom line here, and this is the one thing that you have to understand about our entire theory of online marketing, we hit them where they ain't. So we're not trying to do what everybody else is doing. Okay, that's why what we do is a lot of times it's either a little bit different or way the hell out in left field, but it works. Okay, we were the first people that really pioneered how to get on. Google in 30 days or less, when everybody else is like four, five, six months, and they still can't get close to page one because we're not just working the page, we're working everything else with it. Yeah. That's why when Google Plus, as soon as they launched everybody, well, the word Google was in it, and we're like, and everybody's saying, you know, that it's, a, it's a, you know, a, uh, uh, what do you call it, ghost town, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a ghost town, but you know, you're going to hear all this counterintuitive stuff yeah. that people are trying to basically lead you astray. So what we're here to do 
is we're here to drive the herd in the same direction. Because if we don't all go in the same direction, then this stuff doesn't work. But what we're also trying to do is, number one, break it down into language that mere mortals can understand. You'll never hear us talking about SERPs or any of the other buzzwords of the industry. It doesn't, you don't need any of that crap. Two, what we're trying to do is make this thing doable. That's the most important thing. You know, and that's why when we do our assignments, like we're doing right now, we give you one assignment. Now, the blogging is sec technically a second assignment, but that's a repetitive thing. You know, that's basically you tooting your horn about your business, you're telling people some interesting things about your industry, that kind of thing, okay? But the, the other thing is every week we do something different, like we did the LinkedIn, we did the Merchant Circle, okay? Next week when Hector comes back, we're going to do backlinks. In fact, this week really what all I want everybody to do are two things, and I always say one thing, one of them is actually a do, <laughs> and one of them is a tell. Okay, the do is basically a redo. I, if you haven't finished your assignments for the last couple of weeks, which is, you know, of course, doing your blog and doing your LinkedIn and your Merchant Circle connections and reviews, I want you to do that. And then the, the, the new thing, which is easy to do, is again, every, I want everybody to, to send out your idea of what your unique sales proposition is. In other words, if you were going to use an offer to make your, your site sticky or you wanted to describe what the big benefit is to everybody that would possibly want to use your service, what I want you to do is just email that to everybody in your team and let everybody take a look at it and comment on it.